Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how you can add flat beads to your Kamehameha braids. Because your typical beaded Kamehameha is done with round beads where you incorporate them into the braid but sometimes you can get some really nice flat beads that you like to add to a Kamehameha braid so I'm going to show you how you can do that. And it also really opens up for many more design possibilities. Now if you're new to Kumihimo, a starter kit is always a great place to start, so I just want to mention that I do sell one on my shop, so what I'm going to do is leave links to that in the description box down below so you can easily go and have a look. Otherwise, if you want to learn this braiding technique, then keep watching! So these are the materials that we're going to need. First of all, I have my Kumihimo disc here, and I'm using the round one in this case because I have it handy, but it doesn't really matter whether you use the round or the square one for this braid. And then of course we need some cord to be able to make our braid with, so here I have Eslon cord in two different sizes. I have a thicker cord that's going to be the main braid, and then I have a thinner cord here. Now this is for the purpose of adding the beads in. And I'm just using both of these cords here in the same colour, just so that thin cord blends in as much as possible in the braid. And then of course we'll need our beads here, so these specific ones I'm using are just some tulip beads, but you can really use whatever kind of flat beads that you have. These are just going to be to demonstrate with. And it's going to be the same technique regardless what beads that you're using. Then I'm just going to be using my ribbon ends here to finish off the braid with. And then of course my findings, so my lost or claw clasp and extended chain, and of course the drop rings there to put it all together. Now for the material list and any links you might need, they're going to be in the description box below the video, so check that out. Otherwise, let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. Then we need some lengths of our cord, and what I have here is eight lengths of about 50 centimeters each of the thick cord. And these are going to be used to make the braid with. And then we're also going to need a length of our thinner cord here of about 50 centimeters, and this is the length we're going to use to add the beads in with. And then what I've done is taken all the lengths of cord and put them together at the end, so I made them even, and then I just tied a knot to hold all the cords together so we can then use this and attach them onto our disc. So then to attach the cords to the disc, we need to take the end of the cords with the knot on. I'm going to put that down through the hole in the center of the disc here. Then we need to just separate out the single cord of the thinner gauge from the other ones because we're kind of not going to attach that in the same way. So kind of just pretend it's not there. Obviously it's going to be a bit in the way but just kind of work around it. Then we need to take the other cords and first of all I'm going to be taking two that are further towards the top and placing one on either side of that top dot there, top dot. Then I'm going to take two towards the right, placing them on either side of the dot on the right side here. Then I'm going to take two towards the left and do the same on that side, so opposite. And the last two remaining ones I'm going to bring down and be opposite the top ones. So basically have pairs opposite each other and then we have that thinner cord just hanging loose. So that's the setup for now and what we then need to do is get going with the braid and I'm going to braid a short section before I'm going to start adding in any beads. Now this thinner cord here isn't going to be braided like the other cords but we're going to keep having to move it so it doesn't kind of end up where we don't want it to sit. So right now I have it in the middle between those two cords at the top and that's where I want it for now. So I'm going to start my first round here. I'm going to release the right one of those two top ones and then bring it down, make sure it comes down on that same side where it was sat of that thinner cord and then bring it over towards the left and below the pair on the left here. And then I'm going to take the left one, you can always move this if it's a bit easier to not get tangled up. So the left one comes over towards the right and goes in the slot just below that pair on the right side and then you can bring that back to the middle. Then on the bottom here we need to do the same, so we don't have to worry about that cord in this case. The right one goes over to the left and now it goes above all the cords on that side and the left one goes to the right above all those cords. So now all the cords here are on the sides, so we now need to move the middle ones to get cords back on the top and the bottom as well. So that means it doesn't matter what side you start on, I'm just going to start on the left one. Now out of the two middle ones, I'm going to take the top one, so the one right above the dot here in my case, and bring that down, and then stay on the left side here of that bottom dot. Then I'm going to take the bottom one of those two on the side, of the two middle ones, and bring it to the top. I just need to move that top cord out of the way. 
and again put it right opposite so on that left side of the top dot and then I'm just moving that back over so you can see all I'm doing with this cord for now is kind of just moving it out of the way then on the other side do the same thing the top one of the two middle ones comes down on the right side stays on that side you can see we now have a pair back in the original position on the bottom side the bottom one of those two goes up and we now have a pair on the top as well now obviously you can see on the side we have a gap so all we need to do is move the two cords closer to each other so they end up on either side of the dot again and that's now one full round so we then need to start another round so basically repeat the same thing but we just need to incorporate this loose cord in the right way so it does need to be incorporated into the braid so it doesn't just lay loose next to the braid obviously so now what I'm going to do before it was towards the top I'm now going to bring it towards the bottom so just downwards here and otherwise we're going to be doing the exact same thing so start with the top right one bring out to the left below the others the top left one goes to the right below the others and then we need to take the bottom ones here so make sure that this loose cord you can just put it towards the left first if you want to or leave it in the middle I take the right cord of those two on the bottom bring it towards the left and again above the others and now remember before taking the left one we need to make sure this loose cord is towards the right before I then release it and then bring it over towards the right so we have four on either side now and then to complete the round we need to like I said it doesn't matter what side you start on this cord is still loose the two middle ones on either side the top one of the two middle ones comes down the bottom one goes up and they stay on the side that they're coming from the side of the dots there and they're opposite each other and then if you need to move that loose cord out of the way the top one of the two middle ones comes down so we have a pair back on the bottom and the bottom one goes up and then we just need to close up the gas between the cords on the side and then we have the cords back in the original position again and you can see we still have this loose one so this is basically what we want to keep doing for now just a few more rounds but remember in the next round we need to bring this loose cord to the top so basically it keeps kind of weaving in and out in the middle of the braid and otherwise we're doing the braid in the same way so we just need to end up having just a couple of centimeters before we start adding in any beads so now I've got some braiding done you can see it start to come out here and form the braid below the disc and I have a decent enough length now just enough so we can use that to finish it off with so now we need to start thinking about adding in the beads now this will be different depending what beads that you use now obviously these ones are the ones that I'm using in this case here so it basically what we need to do is account for the size of the bead or the length or whatever measurements it has so that means right now I've ended up with the loose cord coming downwards towards the bottom so towards me and that's where I want to end up now what we need to do is I'm going to start another round but I'm going to leave this loose cord down where as opposed to before we would have brought it up but I'm not going to do that so I'm starting a new round so including the round the one where I just finished with a cord coming downwards this is going to be my second round exact same technique of making the braid On the side, do the other side, make sure to move this cord out of the way whenever I need to. Close up the gap and then we have the cords back in the original position so that was one full round again. So that was my second round and like I said we need to do the amount of rounds that will account for, in this case here the bead is going to sit lengthways so like that on the braid. So that means however long or tall you could say this bead is from one hole to the exit of the hole we need to make sure we account for that so basically make enough braid now so this was my second round I'm gonna then just do a few more so obviously this might be different if you're using a different bead but you can kind of measure it as you go but by 
occasionally putting the bead on the cord and seeing if it fits nicely. So this is my third round. Making sure I move that cord. And it's still just kind of hanging out towards the bottom. I'm going to then start my fourth round. You can see it continues to just be the exact same technique. Just the half round braid structure. Make sure that I always, when I'm doing the bottom ones here where the cord is coming towards, that I move that so it doesn't get tangled up in a way I don't want it to. And this was my fourth round. So just finishing that up. Close up the gap. And then what I'm going to do is take my cord here. Now I know this should be the amount, right amount of rounds for this bead. But what you then could do if you need to measure it, figure it out is grab the end of this loose cord and put your bead on the cord if I can get it through there we go and then bring it all the way down and then it's going to end up sitting obviously it's going to get pushed all the way down to where the this cord is coming out from the braid and it's going to then end up sitting with the flat side towards the braid and I can see that basically the end of the bead where the cord is coming out from the hole is as slush as it possibly can be really to the end of the braid for now so this is the right amount of rounds of braid to basically be behind this bead which means I'm then going to add my bead here and now need to move this loose cord upwards to then capture it in place again so it goes back to weaving in and out of the braid like that we just basically had a little section now where we made the gap longer to account for the bead so that means the top left one still the same braid structure what you then can do is I find that helpful especially when adding the bead is just add this cord just temporarily into that slot to hold it taut and out of the way but otherwise do the exact same braid structure with the remaining cords just like this and then do the side ones and you will notice that it's going to appear to be a bit loose but obviously for now we only have that cord going through the braid the ones after the bead and then doing the other side and as I bring this up you can just remove that cord from that slot just to make sure to get it correctly positioned and then what you'll notice is that you can tighten this up by pulling at it. It'll tighten up the bead against the braid. And then we finished that round off. I'm going to immediately then bring it down because I want just a little bit of space between my beads. And we need to add the bead on this side again. So we need to add the bead when this cord comes downwards. So I'm just bringing it down, making sure I pulled it a bit tight so the bead is tight against the braid. And then we just start another round, making sure I then capture the cord coming downwards. So just complete this round. And then once I've done that, because I want my beads to sit fairly close, I just want a small gap between them, I already want my next bead in this position here. So that means my cord is coming downwards, the loose one. It means I just need to continue making rounds to create the braid that's going to sit behind the bead. And I know already it's going to be four in total including the round I did where the cord came downwards. Now if you want more space in between your beads all you will do is continue braiding and weaving this up and down until you have the spacing that you want. Remembering to have the cord if you want all the beads on the same side here come downwards so your beads will end up on this side facing towards you. So I'm just going to make the amount of rounds that I need for my next bead. So now I've got my four rounds and you can see if I just push the braid up that the cord is coming out further down. So that means adding the bead, let it drop all the way down. It's going to sit 
in front of the braid and basically the braid is going to be behind it. So again that means now I need to bring it upwards and then trap it in place by making the next round, making sure that be the cord sorry, with the bead on goes up. Like I said, you can always just temporarily put it into one of the slots. Complete this round, which will then fasten it in place. side ones, bring them up, just remove that cord again so we don't get them mixed up and then we have the other bead attached and you can see it does appear to be a bit loose and that doesn't matter because we can literally just pull out the cord and that will tighten it up nicely so there we go now we just need to do the next round where we'll bring it down straight away so it's weaving in and out of the braid and you literally just continue like this. So like I said, it's all about what beads that you're using, however many rounds you need to do to make the braid behind your bead and also have how much space you want between your beads as well is completely up to you. But this is the basic technique. So you just want to do this for the length that you want. So now you've added in all the beads that you want to, all that's left to do is make a little section again on this end just with the braid, so obviously not adding beads in, just again so we have that to finish off. And that means I also want to remember that every time I do a new round, I want to move my loose cord here and incorporate it into the braid. So previously it ended up facing downwards. So I'm going to now bring it up and you can always place it into that slot temporarily. That I just freed up while moving the other cords. And again, you just want to do some rounds so we end up with that short length just like on the other end so once you finish braiding here all we need to do is I like to grab onto the end of the braid from below the disc keep hold of it and then you can just release all the cords from the disc and obviously remove the disc here and then I just tie a knot with all these cords here to be able to obviously let go of it without it coming undone. Just get that knot right down to the very end of the braid. And then I have my braid complete. And this is then what it looks like. So you can see we really get that effect of the beads just basically laying on top of the braid, almost floating on top of it and you don't really see the cord. Obviously in this case I chose the same colour so that really helps with that. You don't notice it at all really so it looks like it is floating on the braid. But we have that braid as the background to carry the beads and obviously that's going to make it nice and comfortable to wear as well if you want to make it a bracelet or whatever you want to do with it. So that's how you want to add flat beads to a Kamehameha braid. And of course all this have to do with this one is finish off the ends of the braid so I do have a separate tutorial that shows how to do that if you want to check that out. So then just to show you an alternative that you can do as well, in this case here I've still got my eight lengths of regular cord and then I've got the two lengths of the thinner cord instead of just one just because I want this design to look a little bit different so it could achieve different looks obviously and play around with the te basic technique. So what I've done in this case is the two thinner lengths of cord. I have one going upwards and one coming downwards. So what I'm going to do throughout this is always make sure that they're opposite each other. And then otherwise the braid structure is the same. So I'm just removing the top right one. And in this case, especially because there's two, it can be handy just to use the slots temporarily for the thinner cords as well just so they don't kind of flop back and forth and get a little bit tangled up where we don't want them to be. So like that. And then the bottom one. And again, you can just put that thinner one in. So you can see the same braid structure. And then just bring the side ones down and up to basically get the cards back in the original position. And now, of course, we have to then just undo or take the thinner cords out of those slots the top one as well before we can then put these in and then we just close up the gap and then we have the thin cord at the top coming out and the thin cord at the bottom 
but again obviously I'm just going to make a length here of just braid so that's why we need to swap the thin cords every single time we do a new round but this time obviously we need to do both so I'm taking the top one down and the bottom one goes up so they basically just swap directions now cross over and otherwise you just start a new round so like that making sure that the thin cords there stay where we want them to so like I said just use the slots however you need to just obviously make sure to differentiate between them and then complete this round close up the gap and then on the other side make sure you just move that first same with the top one and there we go and close up that gap and we still then have the thin cords one coming out towards the top and one coming out toward the, towards the bottom and before I start the next round because I'm still just making a length of braid I want to just flip them over again so swap places or swap directions and then you just start a new round so you want to do this until you have that length of braid first of all then I have that length of braid ready then what I want to do is obviously get to the point where I want to add beads in now now that's what I'm going to be doing here but remember in the previous one we need to make a section of the braid first it's going to kind of lay behind the bead so we just want to keep making our rounds but instead of now flipping or swapping places with the thinner cords I'm just going to leave them where they are and work around them and then obviously we need to make the amount of rounds to fit the length of braid that's going to be behind the bead so now I made the rounds that I need here in this case for this bead I've ended up with five rounds but obviously it's just to show you what you can do as well so I've added my bead onto that loose length of cord the thinner cord the front one so I'm still only going to be adding beads on one side and I've added it in the direction that I want because obviously there's this triangle bead and then I drop that down and before we start the next round I then need to swap the loose thinner cords there so just like the other times now we want to swap them around and then we want to start a new round and again it can be helpful just using the slots temporarily and then making this next round here using the slot down here as well just to make sure I kind of stay organized like that and then just complete this round the other side and obviously we just need to release these again bring that up and close up the gap and then we kind of lock the bead in place now with having the cords swapped direction there those thinner ones that are pointing up and down and again you can just pull out to make sure the bead is nice and tight so there's nothing loose there or anything now what I want to do because of the design that I want on this because I want these triangle beads to end up being a bit like a bow against each other I want to straight away add in another bead so I don't have a gap between all the beads which means instead of just swapping them straight away to kind of create more space what I'm going to do is just make more rounds so I now need to make the same amount of rounds that I just did behind that bead straight away instead of like I said creating space between them so I'm just going to do that so I have my five rounds of braid again you can see that behind where my thin cord is coming out further down and then I want to add the next bead and this one I've then put on in the opposite direction so for my triangle beads I have the point going downwards whereas before I had the point facing upwards then I'm going to let that drop down and then we need to swap the cords to obviously fasten this in place so those thinner cords swap them with each other again and then all we do is make the next round where we trap them in place so again use the slots and simply then keep braiding 
and also just in the bottom here. And then just bring the sides into place as well. Bring that down and then bring that up. Close up the gap. And then the same on the other side. So you can see the technique stays exactly the same with the braid. It's just now I have two loose cords instead, which we're kind of doing the same thing. There's just two every time we're moving them. And they're, they're trapped in place. And again, you can then just pull at the loose cords gently to tighten up a little bit, which obviously they'll get tighter as you move further along in the braid. And then they sit like this on your braid. So kind of form this little bow. And as you keep doing that, you're going to get these kind of bows because the triangle is sitting in this direction against each other. And then obviously I want to create space between the bows though. So there you just create however much space that you want to. So it's just to show you a different way where you can use this technique. So I now finished this braid here and I just wanted to show you what it ended up looking like. So you can see on this side here we have all these beads that I added, the triangle ones. And because of how I made them sit together, they're like little bows going all the way along. But the other side has no beads so it's going to be nice and comfortable against the wrist if it's a bracelet. So you can really see the effect that you can end up achieving with this technique by just adding the beads there on one side and just bringing the other one in as well. Just these little tulip beads just on the one side so you're able to add flat beads to your Kamehameha braids and just using the braid basically as a background for them. So this tutorial was really just to show you the technique of how you can add flat beads to Kumihimo braids which will really open up so many more design possibilities. Because as you can see in just these alone you can really play around with so many different ideas. So I really hope you enjoyed learning this technique and also if you're just starting your Kumihimo journey don't forget to check out my shops as well for the beginner Kumihimo kit that might be helpful. Otherwise thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.